Today we are going to be looking at a new Pico 8 version, it's 0.2.1b. Mm. We're thinking about Chinese energy drinks. They don't have any bubbles in them, so they kind of taste a little bit like a melted gummy bear. Hi, I'm Christian, welcome to Lazy Desk Academy. Today we are going to be looking at a new version of Pico 8. Just came out, or it came out quite a long time ago. But I kind of wait, waited for, you know, all the additional reviews to settle and I think there's going to be a C coming out in the future soon. So this is 0.2.1b. Um, it's not a big revision, it's a small revision. Previously we had, of course, the big beta release that was full of features and interesting and exciting stuff. This time it's a bit of a small release, so not quite as groundbreaking things. But uh, this is going to be, this is going to, this is very exciting to me because it's a sign that Senpai noticed me because there's a one feature that I requested. Um, and of course, I guess other people as well, but I contributed to the fact that it's, it's there. So, ah, really good. Also, I will be rickrolling you four times throughout this video and I already rickrolled you once. Anyway, moving on to the feature set. So as always, I will pick up um, the features that I personally are more, more, most interested in, right? So one a new BIM, there's some improvements on the way you can draw shapes. Overall, generally things are the same, but there's some additional stuff in which we can draw shapes. For example, when we switch here to uh, the line tool and we zoom out a little bit and start drawing shapes, uh, that's okay, but if we press shift, you will see that the line will snap to 22.5 degrees. So you can um, draw like isometric tiles a lot easier right now. So this is very useful if you want to do kind of any kind of isometric stuff or, you know, just diagonals are very easy to snap into. So this is really nice. Uh, still some, some bugs here, like look, there's a weird stairway happening in some directions. So that's why I assume there's gonna be another revision later on happening, um, but I don't expect any more, you know, major new features to come out. By the way, throughout this video, I'm gonna get more and more sweaty because it's four degrees here in uh, in Fuzhou, <laughs> and I cannot run the AC conditioning while I'm recording the video. So, oh man, a mm, bit of a challenge here. Anyway, so that's drawing lines. That's good and nice. So another feature that's new, and uh, that is going to be maybe the more uh, interesting one. It's going to be this one. The, um, so the circle now is the oval tool, no longer the circle tool. Whoa, that's a thick, that's a thick boy. Um, so now it's oval tool. So you're not no longer drawing circles, but you're drawing the, those ovals here. Hello, I am Christian. <laughs> uh, and again, the, if you oops, if you um, press a shift, it will still snap to a circle, so you can still draw your circle. But the default is ovals now. Nice. And uh, and now we kind of like going in like into programming features now. Of course, these oval tools are exposed to us in programming as well. So we have oval, oval, so we have oval. Um, so that's like 10, 10, 30, 30, whatever. Uh, let's do a CLS in front. So that's an, uh, that's not an oval. That's a circle. But we can if you do like this. You can see, uh, you can um, make ovals with this, uh, however size we want. That's really nice. And of course we have the uh, equivalent oval fill. Um, that's gonna be the same, but just filled with, um, with a color. Very simple, very easy, very good. I like it. Um, I've been missing this a lot. Um, what can we use this kind of features in? Well, I think um, it's gonna be very useful for things are particles and generally you can like draw more interesting shapes. You have more flexibility of drawing shapes. It was pre possible previously to do ovals, but you would have to code your own, roll your own code to um, create it yourself. So um, having this like built into Pico 8 is really, really, really nice. And of course you can do something like this with this. So important thing here, I'm just moving this thing with a mic now, so um, important thing here then to note is that the ovals can only be stretched in two directions, so in the y and x direction. You cannot stretch them diagonally if you want to stretch them in different directions. You still have to roll your own coat and that's a bit of a bummer, a bit of a uh, restriction. I'm not sure if there's a way around this. It's just like 
um, I know that um, there's an overall drawing tool in um, engines like processing, but processing has all these tools that allow you to like transform the entire screen. Uh, so you can like stretch them in different directions as well. Pico 8 doesn't have that. So I guess that's weird. That's, that's, that's what we're gonna be stuck with. But I think this is still nice and still very useful. You can draw like shadows underneath characters now. It's, it's really, really nice. Moving on. So this is now um, the demo that uh, Zep posted in his post uh, about his this new version and something that is like uh, quite important here like he uses a lot of patterns here uh, fill patterns um, to just like you understand um, let me uh, remove the loop so we only have one oval going whoops what is happening oh yeah uh, i equals zero right so now we have like one oval happening and it has like a fill pattern uh, the fill pattern is here we can turn off the fill pattern so you can see this is like an oval that circles and we filled it with a fill pattern, right? Um, so the interesting thing is that oh, I already did some experiments here. Uh, the fill patterns are now also observed in the drawing tool, which I think initially was a bug, but now it's like the legit thing. So like if I draw an oval here in a fill tool, in, in a drawing tool, it still retains the pattern from the last time I run the program. <laughs> <laughs> and to get rid of it, I'm not sure if we can get rid of it in the editor. Uh, you basically have to, you know, uh, I guess like fill pattern nothing, and then and then you will get your normal ovals. <laughs> Something to watch out for. Like if you run your program and start, you know, drawing things in here and realize, oh wait a minute, the pixels are not really showing up. That's maybe because you set the fill pattern in your program, and when a program quit, it still remembered the fill pattern and uh, it's applied to your to your uh, shapes that you draw in the sprite editor. I like it, it's good. It's um, It gives like more flexibility. It's just like a little bit bad that it's hidden. It would be nice if there was like a, like a little button to turn it off <laughs> or something. I don't know, it's kind of difficult in the interface. It's already so full with stuff. Um, but yeah, it's kind of nice that uh, they turned a bug into a feature. So another thing that's also possible now is um, when you're importing sprites, you are actually importing, you can import sprites like precisely surgically into a specific spot in your sprite sheet. So let's say I have here like a little picture and I'm gonna drag and drop it in here. You can see our little Ricky boy here has imported exactly in that, uh, in that space here that I selected and I can have two of them even. Bonk. Um, so this is nice, so you can like drag and drop individual sprites, so you can prepare maybe like sprites for a character animation frames, and you can drag and drop in a sprite sheet and organize the sprite sheet from within Pico 8 and just by dragging and dropping. That's really cool. Um, something to also keep in mind is that if you use code to import stuff, that will also observe this cursor. So for example, if I select this here, so now if I go import rickroll.png, uh, it will actually import the sprite sheets when I, that I imported via code. It will also import them to the cursor, to the place, to the sprite, <laughs> to this, this um, sprite I selected in the sprite editor. So um, now you have to really be careful <laughs> what sprite are you selecting, because if you like want to like replace the entire sprite sheet, for example, which I often do, um, you have to always make sure that you, you know set your uh, cursor to the upper left. Um, sprite to the first sprite so it actually will fill the entire screen otherwise it will import like you know just part of the sprite sheet something to keep in mind of now okay so now to the feature that I was excited about because you know senpai noticed me I sent Zep a little message and I think Zep received similar message from other people I would assume um, and because he said previously that he's opening Pico a little bit he's kind of like less been less um, uh, stringent with um, the kind of functions that Pico 8 has now to kind of like um, 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 open and pick up a little bit to more possibilities, more functionality that might not be as restricted as it was previously. And so uh, I thought that might be a good uh, uh, moment to kind of like sneak in a little suggestion, a little, little uh, improvement, life, to quality of life improvement for us developers. And I requested a feature a function that I always write. So uh, I'm going to post uh, episode of the Pico uh, uh, pork like tutorial where I wrote a function called explode and that function turns a string into an array. It kind of like takes string and like separates the string into smaller strings and put them uh, puts them all in, into an array. 
And I requested that kind of feature because I quite often use it to save a lot of tokens, to add a lot of data to my programs quite easily without losing a lot of tokens. And um, so I requested that him, that Zep might actually include this as part of the standard feature set of Pico 8, and he did. So here is, for example, now I actually looked it up, the entire uh, party in, um, in uh, a lot of drinks. So we have 24 tokens, right? And because we have to like, you know, ev every comma here is a token, right? Oh God, right? That's, that's just like every entry here that was 23, now 24. So every time we add a new character to our party, we lose a token. So if you have a lot of information, a lot of data, you will have to spend a lot of tokens just to get the data in here. So we are 24 tokens right here. And, uh, you know, if you print them, you can see here. So now something you can do is you can uh, do a similar s a thing by just splitting them. So the, here's a fellowship string, which is us all the names separated by a comma, just a single string. And then you can go like party equals split, then the string, and then sp uh, split by commas. And that will give you the same result, but we saved three tokens. <laughs> That's not a lot of tokens that we saved, just three tokens. Um, but yeah, it's not, you know, it's not optimized here. You can you can get the string out and get it in here without saving it in a thing. And that's gonna be, you know, that's that's whole four tokens that we saved here. It's just like, um, it's not being optimized. And in the long run, if you have a lot of data, for example, in my chess program, I had like a, <clears throat> um, a lot of information about you know how much worth uh, the individual spaces on a chessboard have, how much, how much valuable, how valuable they are, and that um, that saved a lot of tokens being able to parse them in like this. And um, now we no longer have to actually write our own split function, and that saves a bunch of tokens. So I actually implemented this in a pork leg, and I saved around 80 tokens, and that's a lot. That's kind of like I could implement a new. Uh, enemy type using this amount of tokens. So this is really good. One thing to note, there is a split will also automatically convert uh, numbers into uh, numbers. <laughs> so like if you have, a, <laughs> that's really good. Uh, uh, you know, I want um, 234, that will um, automatically get converted from, you know, it won't be like this, it will be like this. Um, if you don't want to do that, uh, you have to do, I think, a false in here, comma false. Uh, and then true will convert to numbers and true is default. Just to let you know. All right, and while we're here, and that's actually really useful because we are, are um, having a string here. So while we are uh, a string, an array here. So while we're an array here, let's talk about some new array functions, uh, just briefly, just like some little small functions that are, are, are nice. So, um, add has mm, the ability to add things to um, arrays has a new third parameter so if you go add party let's let's add uh, Josh to the party of <laughs> to the fellowship of the ring Josh <laughs> um, so yeah if you do it like this uh, Josh will be added to the end of the array uh, but what if you want to add him somewhere in between you know that's kind of like um, in a mess right now it's difficult to do this but well now you can do this so for example if you go Josh 1 then Josh will be at the top of the array now like he will be on, on space 1 so he will be added at space 1 that's Gandalf Gandalf will move to space 2 and so forth so everybody will move one step to make room for, for Josh. And then if you want to make him at uh, place two, then here he is at place two and so forth. So this allows you to kind of like manipulate the order of strings more efficiently, more, more effectively, that's really nice. And of course you also have to um, reverse. So if you want to uh, remove individual entries from the array, but um, so pre previously you would do it like this. So we go hello, uh, an old party. Let's get Frodo out there. Get out there, Frodo! Um, oops. Uh, Frodo. Uh, right, we remove Frodo now. Mm, but, you know, what if there's multiple Frodo's? Then it would remove the first Frodo, but not the second Frodo. What if we want to do like here? Let's go, let's get a second Frodo, like the imposter Frodo. Uh, right? So now the first Frodo was removed, so let's let's run this. This is this is how it looks now. We have Frodo in second spot and Frodo in last spot, right? If we delete a Frodo, 
then it would automatically delete the first folder, but not the last folder. What if we meant the last folder, not the first folder? It's going to be it's difficult to specify which folder we want to remove. We would have to maybe remove all of the folders. It's, it would be difficult to, to achieve this. Well, now we can do del i and del i, and then you can specify, you know, I want to delete entry number two. And if you do this, it will remove the first Frodo. If I want to del delete the last Frodo, well, I could just type in a number, but if I just don't, don't type anything at all, no number, it will remove the last entry. So that will remove the last Frodo and not the first Frodo. So again, like additional tools to for us to manipulate arrays. Really nice. Surprisingly, I didn't have to use these tools before, so I didn't, I wasn't ever missing them in my programs, but it's good that we have them now. So, you know, for future stuff, especially like deleting stuff, deleting I without any uh, array, because the, the, um, the interesting thing here is also the, um, as always, as to a lot of functions, um, deleting this entry will also return the entry. So you can go print um, the deleted Frodo. Oops. Uh, yeah. uh, don't, don't mind the squeaking, it's, it's, it's fine. Um, yeah, so we can uh, <clears throat> print out the elements that you remove from an array, so we can like iterate through an array and delete it at the same time. So that's really nice. You can you can do some interesting tricks here. Moving on to a feature that I thought was was exciting. Uh, it's okay, but it's not as exciting as I thought it would be. So um, the idea is that clip. Now uh, we have it here. Um, clip has a new uh, parameter at the end, the fifth parameter, and if you set that to true, then your new clipping rectangle will be clipped by the previous clipping rectangle. Uh, just to remind you, clip what it does. Well, uh, let's remove all the clipping here for now. Oh man. Um, so, and now I'm drawing like a pattern all over the screen, right? And then if I set a clip rectangle, it will draw the pattern just within this clipping rectangle. It will ignore any drawing um, that happens outside of the clipping rectangle, which is really nice for stuff like UI or windows. You can open up a window and then have the text just inside the window and you can like animate the, the window. So it's like, you know, there's, there's lots of really cool things where overlaying effects you can do with clip. Um, yeah, so like this gray rectangle is now the first clipping rectangle. And then we, if we have a second re clipping rectangle, then usually before it would just overwrite, you know, overrule the, the previous re clipping rectangle. And I can move it with my keys for, for this little demo here. But now we can like have two clipping rectangles combine. If we add a true to the second clipping rectangle, then the first clipping rectangle will clip the second clipping rectangle, so we kind of like combine the two. So only the space that is kind of like described by the uh, both clipping like rectangles will become the new clipping rectangle. That's <laughs> I said the clipping rectangles a lot of times now. Um, I thought it would be <laughs> for a second. I got when I saw this, I got excited, and I thought it would mean that we can have uh, clipping rectangles that are not rectangles, like clipping zones that may be circular and so forth. But sadly, it's not possible. It's just like a uh, two rectangles combined um, uh, will always result in a rectangle. So you can have a rectangle, but it's a like different rectangle. Uh, what can it be used for? Uh, I'm not sure. Um, I'm thinking maybe like, you know, again, you more control with UI interfaces and so forth. Like you can have, um, mm, I don't know, UI interface and then something slides over it. If you have any good ideas, post in the comment sections for sure. Um, but yeah, it's good to have like this functionality and some add some added functionality. It's one of those things that maybe you know it's an answer that's waiting for a question. All right, so moving on, there are some functions in here that I would call the Johann Johann Pates functions or Pete's Pete's I guess Pates. Uh, have you seen Johann Pates, our boy, or our boy Johann? What he's been doing, what he's been up to recently. So Johann has been on a roll. And he's been exploring the new 3D capabilities of Pico 8, and he posted some really, really spicy gifts. So here he is, uh, you know, experimenting with like some little cars, maybe some have a little car driving game, and like this very simple geometry with some really nice textures using the new um, T line function from that uh, from the last review. And obviously, you know, people really like that. But Johan was like, ah, but I need to create like the 3D shapes. How to make the 3D shapes? Well, then Johan went ahead and went and built like Blender or like 3D Studio Max, I guess, in uh, Pico 8. So here has this little tool here that you can use to model 
um, geometry a little bit, simple geometry, which is kind of like blows our mind. So this is Pico CAD, right? And then Pico CAD also has an uh, option to texture, like so, so you have like UV unwrapping within Pico CAD, which also blows my mind. And I don't know how he did it, but he did it. It's it's amazing. Uh, I'm not sure what the state of Pico CAD is right now. I don't think he released it yet. I'm not sure. Uh, but yeah, um, it, when it comes out and it's available, and I will I will give it a proper uh, go because this seems exciting. This seems like you're we're building the foundations of uh, an eventual Pico 8 3D future. Who knows? Who knows? Uh, this looks exciting. And then of course you can see like his creations, like monster trucks and everything. Some really cool stuff in here, made in Pico CAD. But uh, Johan also posted like these tweets where he was like. Um, but how do I save these files? Now, if I have this editor here, how do I get the files out of here? How, we, how do I, can I load files in here? You know, this kind of like, uh, there wasn't really good solutions for this anyway. Oh, by the way, he also, he posted recently this. 22,000, uh, 12,000 uh, likes from, from this one, this scene in, from Wind Waker. Obviously not playable. It's just like a single scene. We're not going to have Wind Waker in P8. I don't think we will. Uh, but it's exciting to, to see it. It looks good. The, the colors work really nice. Yeah, so the uh, question is how do I, you know, I get things in and get things out of Pico 8? So this, there are some new functions for this. Um, you could always do um, print H, right? You could always print H. And you could print something like, you know, uh, crazy, crazy, crazy. Oh, no, you can uh, print like, uh, hello, boy. Um, and then you could specify a file name. So this is hello. And then you can specify, um, yeah, so this was what it was before. And you can run this. And it would do, it would save a file in the same folder that your Pico 8 file was in. And this time we say didn't haven't saved this Pico 8 file, so it just saves it in the, the card folder. So if you open it, you will see that we have our hello boy. So you can put any text in a file and save it on our desktop. Obviously only works for um, for executable versions, it wouldn't work for a online uploaded to website version, obviously. Ah, so you, there's like a third um, parameter here, which is, which is overwriting. If you want to overwrite the text or add a text to a file, and there's the new parameter, the fourth parameter. If that's set to true, then if you run this, it will boop, pop up there in a the desktop. So we can see this is our new file here. And if we open this boy, then we will see, um, yeah, hello boy there. Um, yeah, so this allows you to kind of like save files from, if you make a tool like Johan, you can create a, a, you can save files from a tool and to the desktop and so forth. That's, that's really useful. But of course the question that you might ask yourself is, okay, so that's good. I can get stuff out of Pico 8. That it was, it, we were able to do this before, but now we can save it to the desktop. That's nice. How do I get stuff in from somewhere? How we can load it and re-edit something, right? That's kind of not really possible previously. I think not really, like you could load things from other cards, but that was complicated. Um, so yeah, the new abilities now, you can cr open a serial stream and you could do that before with like GPOI pins on a, on a, a pocket chip. I don't have a pocket chip here, but there were like pins on top of a pocket chip and you could use it to communicate with uh, devices. Now we can use kind of like a similar system to communicate with files. Uh, here's how this works. Okay, so this is the little code that I wrote here. Um, I'm gonna scroll real quick through this. Um, this is what it looks like. Uh, basically, um, stat120 is gives you, um, throws you a true if you drag and drop a file onto Pico8. Um, and then you can use this kind of code uh, using the serial function here to um, get um, uh, some bytes, some like get some information from that file and write it to some piece of memory in Pico 8's memory. Um, so, so yeah, let's run this. And then let's get some test here. Uh, we, we could just draw, probably drop this boy here. So you see, hello boy, this is the text that we got out here. We have also, we can do hello world. Hello world, right? So you can uh, draw drag and drop files in here and they will get printed out. Um, notice that they don't get just like printed out 
entirely, but just like one character by character, and that's because it's a serial communication, so you kind of have to like get a chunk from the file, save it somewhere, and then say, okay, next chunk, please. And so, so you can just like drop the entire file into Pgate, but you have to do it like piece by piece. And this is where we're, where we're doing this. So again, if set 120, right? Uh, we have specified an address where it's written to. <laughs> A good address would be this one, because that's where the variables are, you know, that's where actual variables are. So this is where a good address to, to, for you to, to try this. But I was clueless and just put it to zero. Let's put it to zero, man. Uh, and what it does, it's actually, it writes into the sprite sheet, which, okay. <laughs> we will see in a second how that looks. Um, so yeah, uh, and that's the update function here. So this is drawn, run every, every frame. And then um, I have a variable here and I have serial, serial. Um, this is the address where the file information lands in the documentation here. You can see it's here. I'm going to zoom in, right? So this is where a dropped file is. You can also drop images. That would be a different address, but I did, didn't dig into images yet. Then we specify our address where we write this information to, where we take the information from the file and write it to. And then the size, I, um, I just picked one for one byte. Uh, so that's one character um, and a number from zero to 256. Um, right, so I write, take this one byte and write it to memory and this specific place at, at place zero. And then um, the result I get, the read, um, the result I get from zero function is how many, how much information was actually written. If it reaches zero, that means no information was written. Uh, and that means the end is over. And um, yeah, so that's good. And then I, I just add this to, a, I just um, use peak to get the information from that P, uh, place in memory, uh, the write to place that we specified here. We get that information and put it in the variable. Uh, we add this to this text variable and that's and that text variable gets printed on the screen every frame. And so that's how you get, you know, uh, you can print hello world or you can print something like this. You can get a lot of text in here. That's nice. As you can see, it's really slow. You can speed it up if you, if you, because right now we're doing one character per frame. We can speed it up, obviously. Um, but there's some limit at some point. Uh, you can also, of course, have more characters per frame. Um, but yeah, it's not instantaneous. So that's how we get stuff inside here. Oh yeah, it's something I wanted to show you. So if you write this into the this um, memory space, then actually you're writing into the sprite sheet. So you can see this is my sprite that I draw as well, the z sprite number zero. And if I put this in here, you can see that there's like little pixels twitching there on the upper right corner. That's actually the uh, characters that being being written into those pixels. And then we get those characters out of the pixels and put them into our our text file. So that's nice. Anyway, so yeah, this is um, zero processing and there is some more you can also get um, uh, image files in here as well, but I haven't dug into it as well. Like this, this is like, a, I think a good way to get you started. And then if you want to explore some more, if you have interesting files, if you're interesting snippet, code snippets, you can always put it down in the comment section or visit our Discord channel. That's always good. So yeah, that was basically it. Um, there is um, some stuff if you go through the, dig through the uh, change log, there's some interesting things like <laughs> screen glitches after running for 25 days. <laughs> <laughs> that was probably very difficult to debug. <laughs> so yeah, that's been fixed for sure. Uh, what else? Um, oh yeah, um, in the last episode, uh, on last version I was looking through, there was a bug with undo in the sprite sheet that was fixed already. And something that I am really excited and relieved about is the HTML, HTML5 export works brilliantly now. So if you export it to HTML file and upload it to itch.io, it will work perfectly without any glitches, without any, you know, on iOS especially, there was this problem where you would um, start drag and drop operations or that the buttons wouldn't even work. It was just completely broken. It was not completely unusable. Uh, it was certainly unusable in yeah, on itch.io and previous versions was still usable on your own websites, but you know, it was just like never a reliable thing. You, I would always have to roll my own code. 
but now it has been fixed. It works perfectly on iPhone now, and I'm so relieved. And it's also really fast now. So um, previously it was like some, you know, the music got glitchy a little bit and so forth. But now it's really fast and smooth. And I was able to play, you know, Ar Arkanoid, my breakout tutorial on the iPhone. And I'm actually now tempted to start um, uh, porting some of my previous games to this new HTML5 code because it's so smooth and nice. But that's just like, I don't know, maybe later on. So yeah, HTML5 works, get your games on itch.io. It's good, it's good now. That's it. If there is more stuff that in this update that you are more excited about, post them down in the comment sections. There's some really, really nice, uh, Pico 8 is really getting a really good good spot. Like this is not maybe a revolutionary update, but the split function is something I'm really excited about. Oval function, obviously really good to have. And um, now support, you know, for those tools that are made in Pico 8. I wonder what kind of other tools we're gonna have in Pico 8. Uh, that's, there's, uh, the doors are wide open now. Yeah, so um, yeah, I had a small break here because um, in the previous uh, weeks because uh, I have a kid, you know, reasons. Um, but I might have more some more time in the future, so I'm looking forward to the next projects I will take on. I have to take, turn on this AC conditioning because the temperature in this room is getting really, really high. Uh, yeah, thank you for watching. See you in the next video. Bye bye.